So in the previous lectures, we uh, discussed the mean shift algorithm for the purpose of data clustering and data blurring. Now we'll focus our attention to the uses of mean shift algorithm for the purpose of image smoothing and image segmentation. Uh, so as we'll see now, mean shift algorithm is used uh, for blurring images with edge preservation similar to the bilateral filter or the Kohara filter in the computer vision literature. Uh, so mean shift based uh, edge preservation uh, blurring operation uh, has similarities with the bilateral filter where we had both the special as well as the range domain Gaussian kernel functions. Uh, so for the purpose of image blurring, if you use Gaussian kernel, we typically truncate it uh, as it has infinite support and in images, a non-truncated Gaussian kernel will require computations with all the pixels in an image for every pixel location in the image. Uh, thus, a truncated Gaussian kernel is used uh, with finite window size uh, for processing uh, the images using the main shift algorithm. Uh, so this is just like what we do in the computer vision literature. So the same ideas apply uh, to the mean shift based image smoothing and clustering algorithms as well. So in truncated uh, kernel, in truncated kernel with fixed window size, uh, we can consider only the pixel uh, within the window for the purpose of computing of the mean shift vector for each of the pixel location in an image. And typically in the literature, uh, it is suggested to perform the mean shift blurring in the LUV or LAB color space as opposed to the RGB color space. So once uh, the uh, results are obtained, once the smoothing is done in the LAB or LUV space, we can convert the results back to the RGB space. So the procedure to perform the mean shift blurring is to first convert the RGB image to a LAB or LUV color space. So for the purpose of image blurring, note that in regular computer vision, we blur pixel with its neighboring spatial uh, points. In the bilateral filter, we also take into account the spatial distance of the neighboring uh, spatial points into account uh, to decide their weights when computing the weighted mean of the neighbors for, for the purpose of smoothing a particular pixel location. Similarly, in the mean shift uh, algorithm, uh, we define the multivariate kernel as a product of two radially symmetric kernels with two different bandwidth parameter, one for the spatial domain and one for the range space domain. So similar to the bilateral filter, we have range space kernel. And we have the spatial domain kernel or simply spatial kernel with two different bandwidth parameters, uh, HR and HS. So recall in the bilateral filter, uh, both these kernels were the Gaussian kernel, whereas the machine learning literature through the mean shift algorithm provides us a much more powerful tool where we can change these kernel functions. So in the mean shift based clustering algorithm, the spatial kernel can be a flat kernel, whereas the range space kernel can be a Gaussian kernel. So this gives us much more control as opposed to a regular bilateral filtering algorithm. So we will have two different bandwidth parameters as opposed to a single bandwidth parameter like in the generic data blurring and data clustering uh, mean shift algorithms. So we have two different bandwidth parameters HS and HR for the range and the spatial domain similar to the sigma s and sigma r that we had in bilateral filter. So recall in bilateral filter, we had two different standard deviation values uh, for the kernels operating in the range and the spatial domain. Similarly, in the mean shift algorithm, we are going to have two different bandwidth parameters. One is hs and the other is hr. And if we are using a Gaussian kernel, then hs and hr are both going to be the standard deviations of the Gaussian kernel. So here, our multivariate kernel function for the purpose of image smoothing is defined as K H S H R to denote its dependency on the two different bandwidth parameters, some constant over H S square H R to the power n, where n is the uh, is the dimensionality of the uh, color space. So in typical RGB image, the value of n is three, and here we have H S square because in the spatial domain, there are only two parameters, the X coordinate and the Y coordinate. So the spatial domain is inherently a 2D domain and the HR, uh, the range domain is a 3D domain. But here for the, for the sake of uh, generality, we have used HR to the power N, but for the purpose of image smoothing, this is going to be three. 
if you are using color image if you are using uh, if you are using grayscale image then the value of n is going to be 1 so we have one kernel function defined over the spatial domain xs over hs square and one kernel function for the range domain xr over hr square so these kernel definitions are the same as we learned in the kernel density estimation uh, lecture and also uh, the definition is the same as we learned in the in the generic discussion of the kernel functions when we discuss the kernel density estimation uh, here the only difference is that now we have two different kernel functions one operating in the range domain and the other operating in the spatial domain with two different bandwidth parameters so typically in practice uh, the kernel function k are the truncated Gaussian kernels Uh, these can also be sometimes a Panishnikov kernel. And typically, uh, the uh, flat kernel only makes sense for the spatial domain. So, uh, if we are using two different kernel functions, for example, if we are using a different kernel function for uh, the spatial domain and different kernel function for the range domain, then perhaps we can uh, add another subscript k s and k r to denote that these two are different kernels but if we are using both uh, as a gaussian kernel then the only thing that will change is the input dimensionality the input data as well as the bandwidth parameter whereas the kernel function will remain the same so we can also use flat kernel but the flat kernel will make sense only for the spatial kernel and not for the range kernel so if we are using flat kernel then it would make sense to only have ks as a flat kernel whereas kr to be a gaussian kernel and typically when we use mean shift algorithm we use both the kernels as a truncated gaussian kernels so here xs belongs to r2 and xr is a three dimensional real vector. Uh, because for images, there are three color channels like RGB or LUV or LAB. So now we'll discuss a pseudocode for smoothing the images. If you want uh, to read more of the background theory, you can read the paper Mean Shift. A robust approach towards feature space analysis. So this is the original mean shift paper that presented these algorithms as well. Uh, so the first step is to convert the image to a lab or LUV color space. So as discussed previously in the data blurring lecture, we can change the order of the loops. For example, uh, we can have for loop nested inside the while loop and the while loop can also be nested inside the for loop depending on what variant of the mean shift uh, we are using. But here we'll discuss the variant of the mean shift that was discussed in the original paper. So the section 4.1.1 of this paper uh, discuss this algorithm. Furthermore, there's also another paper and implementation of the mean shift algorithm and there the algorithm one in this paper also presented this algorithm for the uh, image smoothing so now we'll begin with the pseudocode of the algorithm and as discussed previously in the data brain lecture as well we will use the same ordering of the loops as presented in the original uh, mean shift papers but we can just change the uh, the order of the loops uh, for faster convergence, which we do on a regular basis as well when we use the mean shift algorithm. So we have xi, the data points, as xs, xr, transpose, 
is a five dimensional real vector for i goes from 1 to m where m is the number of pixels in the image where x s i is a special coordinate of pixel i and x r i is a color feature of the pixel at location i. So this is a special feature vector and this is a range of space feature vector. So we begin the algorithm with an outer for loop as uh, mentioned in the original papers, but we can change the ordering of the loop, which we'll discuss uh, towards the end. So for i, 1 to m, we set j to 1, we reset y i j to take the value x i where x i is our full feature vector taking both the spatial and the range feature vectors and we set it denoted by c i so c i is y i j which uh, is initialized as x i. So while not converge, so we repeat the step until convergence. So we set y i j plus 1 takes a value sum or all i from sorry we will use different subscript sum over all k from 1 to m sorry 1 to small n c k times the Gaussian kernel. So here we have denoted this Gaussian kernel KHSHR with a kernel function G. So here we can write the full definition as well. We just write it KHSHR KHSHR which is our kernel function G. norm of y i comma j minus c k over h s h r square. So what this function means is that the definition is expanded to this kernel function over here. So it's a product of two different kernels, the spatial kernel with bandwidth h s and the range kernel with bandwidth h r. So we have clubbed it together and we have write it uh, and we have written it as k h s h r of y i j minus c k over h s h r. And the uh, and the expansion is this formula over here. Where for the range kernel it will become y i j r minus c k r and for the special it will become y i j of s minus c k of s where c k s is a special component of the vector c k and c k r uh, 
is a range component of the vector ck and similarly yijs denotes the spatial component of the y vector and the yijr denotes the range component of the y vector similar to what you have so h so similarly x s denotes the spatial component and the xr denotes the range component so for brevity we have written it in this form divided by sum or all i from 1 to small n k h s h r norm of y i j minus c k over h s h r square so we set uh, the value y i j as this value and then we update j take the value j plus 1 here is small n is the number of pixels in the spatial window in the spatial kernel window so n is the number of pixels in the spatial kernel window around the data point x i so if this spatial window is of size 5 cross 5 then there would be 25 pixels participating in this computation just like what we do in typical bilateral filter we take a spatial window around each of the pixels and then we uh, perform the averaging using the pixels in that spatial window similarly a small n denotes the number of pixels in the spatial window around the pixel at location i we end the while loop and while so we update we define new variable y i con that is y i converse to take the final value y i j and then we set uh, the vector z i to take the value x s i and y i r con so we define a new vector z which for the spatial uh, domain uh, takes the value x s i that is the spatial location of the original pixel in the image and for the range value uh, takes the y i con its range domain vector so here also uh, we see that the y i j is getting modified with every step of the algorithm so here uh, to add clarity this window is defined around the point y i s as opposed to defining around x i s so the window is defined around the point y i j s so this window's location or center is changing with every step of the algorithm and that's the reason why the uh, mean shift based uh, smoothing algorithm is very computationally exhaustive and typically it makes sense for the uh, non real time applications so here we can end the for loop and for and the final step for i equal to 1 to m we have pi that is a pixel value at location i in an image takes a value l u v to r g b of z i r so we convert the range domain vector of this vector z i back to the rgb color space if we had used lab color space then this system would be lab to rgb and we end the for loop over here and for 
So this completes the pseudo code of our algorithm that we can use to uh, blur images while preserving the sharp transitions or edges in images. Uh, furthermore, uh, just to add more clarity here, uh, the vector although here it is clear, but this vector ci or the vector ck over here have two components. One is ckr to denote the range component and cks to denote the spatial component. As we cleared earlier when discuss how we can compute the kernel function for uh, the vector ck and yij over here. And here n is the number of pixels in the spatial window of the spatial kernel around the pixel location i, uh, where it is centered on yijs. So here, as discussed earlier, we use if we are using Gaussian kernel, then we use a truncated Gaussian kernel. So the spatial kernel is always truncated. Otherwise, this will require computations uh, with all the pixels in the image. So if we had not truncated the spatial kernel, this n would have become m in that case, which would have required exhaustive amount of computation. So this is the reason why for truncation of the uh, spatial kernel. Or just like we do in any other image processing or computation algorithm as well. So the value hs and hr, so now uh, as in the data clustering algorithm, we had only single bandwidth parameter, but now in the image smoothing, we have two bandwidth parameters, the hs and hr, and selecting different values of hs and hr will lead to different uh, results and the level of cartoonish appearance of an image. Uh, and, and just like in the bilateral filter, we were careful in selecting the sigma r and sigma s. Here also we can uh, compute the values of hs and hr experimentally for a particular data set or for a particular image. And furthermore, just like we learned in the bilateral filter, we could have some slack over the values of uh, hs and hr uh, by uh, repeated application of the filter. So the filters apply repeatedly uh, over the pixels in an image and that's why it provides us some slack uh, uh, against selecting uh, the optimal values for those parameters. And as discussed further in the previous lecture as well, we have two different variants. So this is the version of the algorithm that is discussed in the original research paper, but typically the variant that we use, which is going to converge a bit faster as compared to this version, is to interchange the while and the for loops over here. So when we change these loops, then each of the uh, update is going to be applied only once for every pixel and when the update has been applied to all the pixels then we move to the next iteration uh, for all the pixels in an image. So here we start with the pixel and we wait until convergence and then we move to the next pixel. Uh, the variant that we prefer is to have this while loop outside where we apply one step update to all the pixels in an image and then we move to the next iteration to apply the second update and so on for all the pixels until all the pixels have achieved their stationary point in an image. So this ends the discussion of the mean shift algorithm for the purpose of image blurring. Now before moving to the segmentation, we will see some of the results of the mean shift blurring applied to images.